Hi everybody, um, welcome to Wednesday, our third day of uh, online learning. I hope everybody's okay with what's going on, or as okay as they can be, school-wise and everything else-wise. Um, I didn't see a lot of people in uh, the two meetings I had yesterday, so I'm going to take that to mean everyone's okay. Um, I'll probably see a few more of you as the days go on, at least I hope so. Now, um, the last meeting I did, I recorded and I tried to send a link out to everyone on the Google Classroom. It was a uh, grade 11 one, I think. Um, I hope that that worked. But I haven't checked yet if indeed it did. So we'll see. All right, let's get down to today's stuff. All right, grade 11s. We have uh, a bunch of questions from the last day that I did not show you the answers to. Um, let's take a second with some of them. Um, a, B, C. So I didn't show you the answers to any of these. So I'll write them out right now. You can check your work. And um, if you have questions, of course, you can come to one of the Hangouts. So A is um, X equals 1 and 2. B is x equals 7 and negative 8. c is m equals 5 and 6. e is x equals 8. Sorry, x equals 6 and negative 8. And f b equals negative three. Um, a, B, C, well, what did I ask you guys to do? There's A, there's B, there's C. So I guess I want you to do D, E, and F. Well, there's D right there. Um, and then we'll do E and F right in the middle here. E. 3T squared plus 14T plus 8 equals 0. So I have to multiply to 24 and add to 14, which is 12 and 2. So it's t plus 12 over 3 plus 2 over 3. That becomes 4. So I have t plus 4, t plus plus 2 thirds equals 0. So it's negative 4 and negative 2 thirds. And then f, 6x squared minus x minus 12 equals 0. Multiply to negative 72, add to negative 1, that's 8 minus 9. x plus 8 over 6, x minus 9 over 6, simplify. 2, 4 over 3, simplify to 3 over 2. x plus 4 thirds x minus 3 halves, which equals, oh, sorry, which makes x negative 4 thirds and 
positive 3 halves. Now, remember, some of you don't like to factor this way. That's okay. Some of you factor in such a way that gets you the answer of, I'll use a different color. Some of you factor and get this, 3x plus 4 and 2x minus 3. If you get that, you just have to remember to solve for x. x equals negative 4, x equals negative 4 thirds. 2x minus 3 equals 0, 2x equals 3, x equals 3 over 2. Okay? Did both of those A, B, C. I did not do D, E, and F. Although there is F right there. Multiply both sides by the denominator to get rid of that. So I'll do D and E right now. 2A minus 5. A plus 5 equals 21A. So that is 2A squared minus 25 equals 21A. 2A squared minus 50 equals 21A. 2a squared minus 21a minus 50 equals 0. So now I need to multiply to negative 100 and add to negative 21, which is 4 minus 25. So a plus 4 over 2 and a minus 25 over 4. Simplify that to 2. A equals negative 2. And 25 over 4. You can leave it as 25 over 4. Or you can rewrite it as 6 and 1 quarter. And the other one I had to do was E. Which I will do right here plus 5 equals 36 over x. Remember, you just have to do the math that you already know. You don't like that denominator, so you get rid of it. If you multiply, do something to the right, you do that same thing to the left. Squared plus 5x equals cancel 36. x squared plus 5 x minus 36 equals 0, x plus 9, x minus 4 equals 0, x equals negative 9, and positive 4. And then you get to the perpendicular question. I did a bunch of, I got you started on it. There's your a squared, b squared, c squared. Then you expand them all. Remember to expand this. It's x plus 2 times x plus 2. Expand it all. Then you see you have a lot of like terms, so you just collect them all and then solve it. So on the left here, put all that together, 26x squared minus 26x plus 13 equals 16x squared plus 8x plus 1. And then you can see like these arrows move all this to one side. So minus 16x squared minus 8x minus 1. 10x squared minus 34x plus 12 
equals zero. 10, 34, 12 are all even numbers. So 5x squared minus 17x plus 6 equals 0. Multiply to 30, add to negative 17. It's negative 15 and negative 2. So x minus 15 over 5, x minus 2 over 5. So x has to equal negative 3, positive 3, or 2 fifths. Now you're smart kids. Bring the math you know to the party. This means x is either 3 or 2 fifths. Now, if I go up to right here, there's an x. x can equal 3, which would mean that would be 15 minus 3, which would be 12. Or x can equal 2 fifths. So that would be 5 times 2 fifths minus 3. 5 and 5 cancel. 2 minus 3 equals negative 1. Are those both possible? Of course not. This distance cannot be negative. It's a distance. So this, remember from our last unit, is a root that we can't have. It's restricted. So this can't work. So the distance of x had to be 3. All right, let's move it along. This is page 7079 of your blue books. Ugh. So if I want you to factor these, you're going to see something. So we'll do that right quickly right here. I have to multiply to 25 and add to 10. Well, that's 5 and 5. So the first one has to be x plus 5 and x plus 5, which means x has to equal negative 5. What's the other way we could write this? No, we could do x plus 5 squared. Let's look at number 2. Multiply to 9, add to 6. Oh, well, that has to be 3 and 3. x plus 3 squared, which is x plus 3 x plus 3. So that has to be negative 3. Now I'm hoping some of you have already seen the pattern. What do you notice? There, there, and then there, 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 and there. All of those values are perfect squares. So let's remember a Oops, ax squared plus bx plus c equals zero. So you can see that all of these, c, oops, c is a perfect square. And what do you notice? about a in all of them. Well, again, squared, 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 squared. a is a perfect square. And what do you notice about b? In all of them. B is a little trickier to see, but you should notice 5, 10, 9, 3, 
6. You should notice that B is the square root of C times 2. Which means there's another way to write that. B, B divided by 2 equals the square root of C. So knowing what you know, you should be able to do all of these in your head. Number 3, what's the square root of C? 7. So that is x plus 7 squared equals 0. So x equals negative 7. What about number 4? Have a look at it. Well, since that's squared and that's squared, I know that's x minus 4. How can it be minus, Mr. Myers? It's positive. Well, we remember that the square root of 16 equals 4, but the square root of 16 also equals negative 4. And negative 4 works because negative 4 times 2 is negative 8. And then we're just rocking along, doing these in our heads. Now, you're smart kids. I know this. You will notice that all of these started with 1, right? Well, what if I gave you... Okay, everyone. Um, let's uh, talk about um, what happens on these if the first number isn't a 1. So for example, what if I gave you... Actually, no, you know what, we'll come to that later. Ah, we'll do one now. Uh, 4x squared plus 12x plus 9. Well, that's still squared, right? And that's now squared. So what if we tried 2x plus 3? Well, there you go. Because 2 squared is 4. 2 times 3 is 6, 2 times 3 is 6, 6 and 6 is 12, and 3 times 3 is 9. So this answer would just be 2x plus 3 would have to equal 0, 2x would have to equal negative 3, and x would have to equal negative 3 over 2. And we just carry on. So, I'm going to give you a new technique to solving quadratics today, and that is called completing the square. So let's remember, the first way we have to solve quadratics is factoring. And we know how to do that. x squared plus 7x plus 12 equals 0, x plus 3 x plus 4 equals 0, and x equals negative 3 and negative 4. Mm, excuse me. Easy peasy lemon squeezy. Now, let's change this very slightly. x plus, oops, sorry, not x plus, x squared plus 10x plus 12 equals 0. Does that factor? No, it doesn't. 
but we are allowed to do math to this to make it look like something that we can work with and i'll show you what i mean we already know that if i have x squared plus bx plus c if c is a perfect square and b divided by 2 equals the square root of c, then we could factor it, couldn't we? So right here, let's have a look at this. What's the problem? There's b and there's c. c isn't a square root, is it? Or isn't a perfect square, sorry. It is a square root. So what would happen if I did this? x squared plus 10x, and I moved that over here, equals negative 12. Now you see I left a blank there, because this is missing its c, isn't it? So let's think about what we could do with that. If b divided by 2 equals the square root of c, then shouldn't b divided by 2 squared equals c. Well, there's my b divided by 2. What is that? 5. b divided by 2 is 5. Square it, and I get 25. 25 is c. So what do I put right there? 25. Now, you're smart kids. I just put a brand new number on the left side of this equation. What do I have to do to the right side? I have to put that here, or it's not equal anymore. Now, I have x squared plus 10x plus 25 equals negative 12 plus 25 is 13, yes? Now this, we know how to factor that. We factor that in our heads. x plus 5 squared equals 13. Now, you all remember from our radical equations that if I had this, the square root of x equaled uh, 3, you could square both sides, right? And x would equal 9. Sorry, square. Well, in this equation, I have a square, so what do I do? Well, I get rid of the squared by square root. So now I have x plus 5 equals the square root of 13. Isolate x like I always do. Negative 5 plus the square root of 13. And then you're done. OK. I'm going to pause that for a second. Okay, so now you should be saying to yourself, okay, Myers, why do we sometimes get one answer? And sometimes, like in 4.1, we would get two answers. Well, let's talk about that. When I make this square root here, you remember when we were doing radical equations, and I reminded you of it here, the square root of 16 is both plus and minus 4, right? Well, that also means the square root of 16 is plus or minus the square root of 16. So right here, I got to remember it's plus and minus. So this answer here isn't just the positive 13, it's also the negative 13. Okay, so let's move this along and see if we can try it out. Remember, we are trying to get it to look like this. And we want C to be 
a perfect square and we want b over 2 squared to equal c. So here we have a question. What do you see? Well, there's a, there's b, there's c, and it equals 5. So this side is already in our perfect square, isn't it? Because the square root of 49 is 7, and half of 14 is 7. So this side factors. Oh, by the way, GDC stands for graphing calculator. Graphic uh, display calculator. We're not going to use those because many of you don't have them at home. Um, and we're just going to not use them. There is some work in this section that is made way easier by using those graphing calculators, but we're not going to do it. Well, I shouldn't say way easier. Um, the graphing calculator is actually quite difficult to use. And um, the math that we would do isn't that difficult. So you'll see what I mean when we get to it. So... Oh, excuse me, big one. All right, so here we have um, a trinomial that we know how to work with. This left side is x plus 7 squared, and that equals 5. Now our final job, as always in algebra, is to get x by itself. So how do I get rid of squared? I square root both sides. Now once I square root 5, I have to remember it's plus or minus. So I have x plus 7 is plus or minus the square root of 5. Then I bring that 7 over. x equals negative 7 plus or minus root 5. Now ladies and gentlemen, this is what we call an exact answer. And we've seen this before. You've done this to death in math. In grade 10, you started doing it. Remember, uh, remember the square root, for example, of 32. You know if you use your calculator, you're going to get somewhere around, you know, 5.7. But that's not exact. What we learned in grade 10 is this is really the square root of 16 times 2. So it's really 4 root 2, an exact answer. In math class, 99 times out of 100, we are seeking the exact answer. Now that doesn't help us in physics class or something like that, right? Because you can't say the, the rock was falling off the cliff at negative 7 plus or minus the root of 5 meters per second because they want real numbers so you could convert that into an uh into a rounded answer a decimal just by punching it into your calculator you would do negative seven plus square root five and negative seven minus square root five and that would give you your two decimals okay but for us we see the exact answer Let's go over and have a look at B. Does that work? It does. I end up with x minus 3 squared equals 6. Then I just do my work. x minus 3 after I square root both sides. Equals plus or minus root 6. So x equals 3 plus or minus root 6. Okay, pause. Now, why did these ones work perfectly? Because our trinomial was already a perfect square trinomial. Now, um, what I would like to take a second now to do is to change this right here to 12 and show you what would happen. That would make this 12, 12, and 12. 
Now, if you get to something like this, we always, we should try to remember, it's not a huge deal. But if you're in my class, you've heard me talk about this before. It's kind of the difference between getting a, a three and a four on the three and four scale. This, you of course would simplify to four times three. So it would be three plus or minus two root three to simplify that to the total best answer. All right, let's have a look at A, B, and C here. We'll notice, first of all, I don't actually have a trinomial here yet, unless I were to move that over. And even if I move that over, I would have x squared plus 10x minus 6 equals 0. And I couldn't factor that because there's no factors of 6 that add to 10. So in this one, since I don't have a perfect square trinomial, I have to complete the perfect square trinomial. I have to make it work. So how do I do that? Well, I say to myself, OK, I'm missing the C here. But I know that if I cut this in half to get 5 and I square it, I will get now a completed square trinomial. But I added 25 to the left. So I got to remember to add 25 to the right. And then I end up with, oh, okay, well, that factors x plus 5 equals 31. Square root both sides, x plus 5 equals plus or minus root 31. x equals negative 5 plus or minus, oh, I wrote 13 there, root 31. And there's my exact answer. Let's look at this guy. Again, if I bring that 3 over, I'm not going to be able to factor. So I'm going to make that complete square. Squared minus 12x equals 3. And I'm leaving a blank there because I know I'm going to divide by 2 to get 6. And then I'm going to square it to get 36. Since I add 36 to this side, I add 36 to this side. And I get x minus 6 squared equals 39. Square root both sides, x minus 6 equals plus or minus root 31, 39. x equals 6 plus or minus root 39. And lastly, this one's tricky because, again, it doesn't factor. So, what do I got to do? Well, I got to get me a C that works. So, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to move this over here. x squared minus 3x equals 1. Now, I say to myself, self, I need that perfect square right there. So, obviously, since I've divided by 2, divided by 2, I'm going to divide by 2 which gets me three halves, and then I'm gonna square it, which gets me nine fourths. Barf! But that's what we do. So let's have a look at this. What made A and B easy? Well, 12 divided by two gave me six. 10 divided by two gave me five. They gave me, they were even. When it's not even, it's barfy but we can still do it. And don't worry, I'm gonna show you ways to get around that later. But we're gonna practice this right now. So if I add 9 fourths to this side, I gotta add 9 fourths to this side. Well, how do I make these two add together? Well, that is gonna be 4 fourths, isn't it? Plus 9 fourths gives me my 13 fourths. And this side, is x minus 3 over 2 squared. See, 6 went there, 5 went there. 
So the 3 over 2 just goes there. Square root both sides. x minus 3 over 2 equals plus or minus the root of 13 fourths. Bring that over. x equals 3 halves plus or minus the root of 13 fourths. Now, we could stop there for the 3. But of course, you want the best answer possible. So you know that the square root of 13 fourths plus or minus is the square root of 13 over 2, right? Which means common denominators, 3 plus or minus root 13 over 2. And that's your best possible answer. So let's sum it all up in here. To solve by completing the square, well, the first thing to do is to get a x, sorry, is to get x squared plus bx equals c. Get it to there. Then b divided by 2 squared gets added to both sides. Step 3, factor your new trinomial. isolate x. Those are your four steps. They're all right there for you. So let's do this thing. Now, remember earlier I said I would talk about what to do if this isn't one. Well, let's talk about that. So step one was to get it. So I had x squared plus bx equals c over here, right? So, well, that's already set up for me, right? So, 2x squared plus 8x equals 6. Now, what bothers me there? This 2 bothers me there. But I've said it a million times. You can't forget your math. Factor everything. GCF. Now I've got x squared plus 4x equals 3. Well, what's half of 4? 2. 2 squared is 4. I've added 4 to this side, so I add 4 to this side. x plus 2 squared equals 7 plus 2, square root both sides, equals plus or minus root 7. So x equals negative 2 plus or minus root 7. Do the same thing here. What do you notice about 3 and 5? Well, I can factor out of that, right? But something weird happens here. I'm going to pause for a second let you try it. Okay, hopefully people tried something here. This was easy, because the 2 worked with everything. But in this one, the 3 doesn't work there. So, but it does work here. Now, I know you all want to take out the x right there, don't you? But if I take out the x, it's not going to work, because it's not going to give me one of those trinomials. So I'm going to take out a 3, x squared minus 5x equals 2, right? Because this is the same thing, yeah? But we're missing that c value, is, aren't we? Oh man, this is odd. What a pain. But, okay, divide by 2, which is 5 halves. Square it, which is 25 fourths. 
Now, I've added 25 fourths to the left side, but I also have it multiplied by three. So really, I added 75 fourths to the left. So what do I have to add to the right? 75 fourths. Barf! But it's just math we already know. Remember, two is really eight fourths. So on the right side here, I have eight and 75 is 83 fourths. On the left side, I have three times x minus five over two, because that's what goes there squared. And now I just solve that. I know it's totally barfy, but you know how to do it. I get rid of this three by dividing by three, cancel. Dividing a fraction by three is the same as multiplying it by one third. So x minus five halves squared equals 83 twelfths. Square root both sides. x plus, sorry, x minus five halves equals plus or minus the root of 83 twelfths. Bring that over. x equals five halves plus or minus the root of 83 twelfths. Now, of course, you should deal with this 12 under here and make it all perfect. Rationalize the denominator. Do all that stuff you need to do. But for today and the next little bit, I'm going to leave it there. All right. We'll practice fixing that up later. Okay. So now... If I want to complete the square where the quadratic term, which is, remember, the a value, is not 1. So the first thing you do, you have two choices here. There's two paths. 1, ax squared plus bx plus c equals 0. If I can divide everything by a, I just do it. And then I factor. I factor a and then three, I just complete the square. But there's another choice. Maybe a x squared plus b x plus c equals zero. Maybe a only works there. So if that's the case, I gotta just factor out an A from that part and then follow what I know. So to uh, only remove A, then I complete the square. But in this case, I have to remember it's 3, or it's, sorry, not 3, a times b over 2 squared gets added to both sides. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to do all 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And then your guys' work for me will be page 82 and 83. Actually, that's not very fair. I'm going to do 1, 2, 3 of this and leave you with 4, 5, 6. And then I'm going to do one, two, three here and leave you with four, five, six. And then page 83. So, number one, 
squared plus 8x equals 3. Complete the square. x squared plus divide by 2 squared 8x plus 16 equals add 16 to both sides x plus 4 squared equals 19 x plus 4 equals plus or minus root 19 Number two, barf, it's not even. All right, x squared minus 5x, I'm going to leave a space here, equals 3. So, <sighs> divide by 2, 5 halves, square it, 25 fourths, yuck plus 25 fourths. I remember that 3 is 12 fourths. So I have x minus 5 over 2, because the b goes right there, the b goes right there, squared equals 12 and 25 is 37 fourths. Square root both sides x minus 5 over 2 equals the square root of 37 over 2, because the square root of 4 is 2. x equals 5 plus or minus root 37 all over 2, because 5 halves and halves. And then number 3. Oh, thank goodness. It's even. It's plus 1 equals 0. But it's not a perfect square, so I'm going to get rid of that C because I want a new C. Excuse me, guys. My dog is whining to get out. I want that new C. So x squared minus 6x equals negative 1. Divide by 2, negative 3 squared, positive 9, positive 9, x minus 3 squared equals 8, x minus 3 equals plus or minus root 8, x equals 3 plus or minus root 8, and of course, root 8 we can simplify to... 2 root 2. And that gets me the best answer possible. And you guys do 4, 5, and 6, and in the meeting tomorrow, or at the beginning of Friday's lesson, I will, of course, do the answers to that. I know Friday is a long weekend. It's a day off. Um, so, you know what? Take Friday off and take Monday off. I'm not going to do lessons on Friday and Monday. So the next thing you'll see from me is a meeting on Thursday and then another meeting on Tuesday. Because this is kind of hard, so I'll probably need to talk to a few of you. Okay, so let's do um, one, two, three on this page, and then I'm going to leave you. So one, two x squared plus 12 x equals six. Now this one, we don't like that two, but we're able to divide everything by the two because six divides by two, so it's cool. x squared plus six x equals three. 6 is even, oh thank goodness, divide by 2, 3 squared is 9, add 9 to both sides, x plus 3 squared equals 12, x plus 3 equals plus or minus the square root of 12, because of course I square root both sides, and x equals negative 3 plus or minus the root of 12 which of course we remember is 4 times 3, 
So our best answer is negative 3 plus or minus 2 root 3. Number 2. 3x squared minus 6x equals 3. Ugh, I don't like that 3. Fortunately, I can divide everything by 3, so it makes it easy. x squared minus 2x equals 1. Oh, thank goodness, it's even. Divide by 2, 1 squared. I add 1 to both sides. x minus 1 squared equals 2 square root x minus 1 equals plus or minus root 2 x equals 1 plus or minus root 2 few two pretty easy ones 3 5 x squared minus 10 x plus 2 equals 0 <sighs> don't like that 5 but oh crap I can't do 5 divided by 2 so, I take out that 5, and I move that 2 over there, negative 2. Now, here, I'm missing my c. Divide by 2 squared is 1. So, I added a 1 right there, but I have to remember, it's multiplied by 5. So I really added 5. 5x five minus 1 squared equals 3. Divide both sides by 5. x minus 1 squared equals 3 fifths. Square root both sides like we've been doing all the way along. x minus 1 equals plus or minus the square root of three-fifths. x equals one plus or minus the root of three-fifths. Now, technically, I need to go further with that. But that's the type of thing that I'll talk about in the Hangout if people show up. And, of course, I'll record those Hangouts. <laughs> What I would do with that technically, and I'll do it. Oh, I'm yawning. And I'll do it very quickly here. That is really one plus or minus the root of three over the root of five. I don't like root five there, so I rationalize the denominator, which we've done already. Plus or minus the root of fifteen over five, and then. If you wanted to get real technical, you could make that 5 plus or minus root 15 over 5, but you wouldn't want to do that because this is simpler. Okay. All right, so your work is the 2, 4, 5, and 6s. And try page 83. And you will not, you'll see me again for a hangout on Thursday and another hangout on Tuesday. There won't be any new work until um, a week from today, Wednesday, because you're taking Friday and Monday off because it's Easter. Okay, we'll talk to you guys soon. Bye-bye.